Hey, konnichiwa minasan, it's Gray from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing, you good? I hope this finds you genki. I'm pretty genki, a bit wrecked, but less about me, more about this. Did that title pull you in? Did the title pull you in on the thumbnail? We'll see what happens, but yeah. Um, if you know my channel, maybe you don't because not many people watch it these days, but I tend to focus on positives. I'm big into positives. I try to review things I enjoy. I do review things, you know, which aren't good sometimes, and I'll be honest, give my honest take, but I'm not the kind of person who just like, you know, screams and shouts at clouds. I don't do that. That just makes me tired. But with this, maybe I wanted to make an exception. See what I did there? This is Exceptional X-Men Issue 1. And I wanted to give this a fair shot. It's written by Eve L. Ewing, so I've read a couple of things by her before. Didn't enjoy either of them. Um, I've heard, you know, rumours here and there that maybe people don't quite enjoy her writing, but there's probably an audience out there for her. The question is, who is this comic written for? What is a target audience? Because obviously it's not me you know, a middle-aged guy, especially a middle-aged white guy, straight guy as well. So yeah, you know what I mean? But let's not get hateful before we start, okay? First of all, let me read the synopsis. Um, I should have got the warnings from this, but here we go. Starts off okay, by the way. Kate Pride, Kitty. She leads a team of all new X-Men. After the fall of Krakoa, Kate Pride is trying to get as far away from all things X as she possibly can. She's just a regular, degular bartender now. What? Definitely not getting ready to head up an all-new team of wayward young mutants while avoiding the watchful gaze of Emma Frost. Big fan of Emma Frost, by the way. Nothing in this title but work, dating, and staving off depression. Did you get that? I'm going to repeat that. It bears repeating. Nothing in this title but work, dating, and staving off depression. That's it. No never-before-seen exceptional X-Men to see here. LOL, it's meant to be a joke, I know, right? But that pretty much sums up this first issue. You know, you get a lot of work behind the bar, washing dishes, serving drinks, talking about relationships, dating, that's part of it, yeah. Apps and dating, you know, down with the cool kids, a concert. There's very little action, a little bit of action, but there's very little action. It's like, it's slice of life, basically. It reminds me of a manga. You know, because manga can do be about anything, all sorts of things. Slice of life, regular life stories are very popular with manga, but for an X Men comic, you know, is this is this right? Is this what's needed? Is this what's going to draw people in with an issue one? That's what I want to know. And again, I'm trying to be fair with this because there are some really good things about this comic. Mostly the art by who is it? Carmen Carnero. Carmen Canero's art is really good. I really enjoyed that in this, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get on with the review. Let's have a look inside the issue. Let me know what you think in the comments. Am I being unfair? Am I just being a silly old white man? So we open up in Chicago. We're getting some narration here. Home has meant a lot of things to me over the years. Deerfield, where I grew up. Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Krakoa, sort of. The helm of a pirate ship. Then we go to Bridgeport. You could say I'm pretty adaptable, that I can make a home wherever I go, but that's more or less because they were my home. My people were my home, ever since I was a scrawny little kid. The X-Men were home, and now I'm kind of drifting along, but I barely have time to think about it, even if I wanted to, which to be clear, I don't. I don't want to think about it. Okay, it's fair enough, you know, it's a, it's a fair opening. We've got talk about home, about the kitty growing up, because it's kitty narrating here, in case you can't tell. But look at this, we're in Lu Lulu's tavern outside, so let's see, let's see what happens. So we find kitty working in a bar in Lulu's tavern, serving drinks. Again, nice art here. A few little jokes in the narration, talking about bartender's worst nightmare, bottomless brunch. Sling enough mimosas and I won't have three brain cells to spare on the X-Men. Then we get what I mentioned earlier, the dishes scene. She's about to wash the dishes, but she's given a break by Lulu. Listen to this, Lulu says, Kate Pride, take a break. Now, call your ma, go outside. Something. Something? Then we got Kitty here saying like she doesn't want time alone with her thoughts. I mean, in case you didn't know this, check out this panel here where she says... I don't like who I became, I don't like it, don't like it, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Okay, we get the point. 
So this is a normal life that Kitty wants, you know, just working behind the bar, trying to forget about Krakoa, forget about what happened there. She's listening to a conversation, two guys here, of course, are talking about how bad mutants are, even though the first one mentions that they have done some good things, but they end up saying like, oh, you know, you can't trust them. Yeah, there's one in my daughter's soccer team. The family's friendly, but it just turns my stomach. So it's the hate against mutants. That's pretty clear. Then we get Kitty in a rating at the bottom here. As for me, I'd rather live among people who hate me than among the shattered remains of the life I knew. Maybe that makes me a coward, but it hurts too much. Times are bad. She'd rather live among people who hate her, even though they don't know she's a mutant. Then this next page here, this is where I start to lose it with the, uh, the dialogue, shall we say. Kitty gets home. She's greeted by the dog of her flatmate. Mickey, how are you doing, buddy? Mickey, no jumpies. Sorry, Kate. And then further down we've got, Isn't that funny, my precious little Mickey? Mikhail Barishnikov, cutest, sweetest dog in the world. Are you still with me? It continues. Look, girly, it's fine if you don't want to live out our middle school Laverne and Shirley roomy daydreams. <sighs> Do people talk like this? Is this whole comic meant to be a big joke? Because it's starting to feel like it. Then we get a joke at the bottom here. Let's let me scroll a little bit. I want, to I want to share this joke with you. Kitty's roommate tells her that she's off to see a movie with a friend. But Kitty's like, I don't want to be a third wheel. Plus, you know, my favourite show is on. Guess what the show is? Ah oh, yes, your absolute fave, Toothpaste Adventures. <sighs> so Kitty goes out, she's off to see a concert and she's supposed to be meeting up with somebody. We find out in a second, but here's a narration again. She's doing this. Normal person things, killing it. My expectations are zero, but I get to see a band I like and go out with someone I didn't meet when I was a literal child. See, I hear that word a lot these days, literal, or read it a lot in comics, literal, literally. Then she gets a notification from her roommate, Pretty, or Pretty, how you pronounce it. OMG, you went out, you left your location on Boo. Yes, I'm a stalker, so what? Then it turns out Kitty is getting stood up on the date. KO, fatality. Should I text her? That's too much. So Kitty's date was with a, a woman. And then the bottom panel, she's saying this does not look like a crowd of people my age eager to deny they're getting older. Not to worry, she didn't really get set up. She messed up. The concert date is tomorrow night. You know, as if she'd make that mistake. But this is my one night off this week. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to do fun single girl in the city things. And that's when we start to get a hint of action as she overhears someone saying, Hey, I said let go of me. There's a girl who has been refused entry by the bouncer, it appears. But my friends. Her friends are like, see you later. They're going to see the band. And the bouncer tells her to get moving. Then he pushes her. Uh-oh. You know it's not going to go well. And this is where we get our first look of new character bronze. Don't touch me. Not quite sure what her powers are here, but yeah. What do you think? She knocks the security guard flying. Are you crazy, you monster? Shouts the guard. Kitty decides to get out of there. My days of jumping into fights are over. Time to go eat some normal sushi. Whatever that means. But then we hear, Back up, back up or I'll... Bang! Is that a gunshot? He's got a gun! Everyone's running and Kitty goes back to help the girl. Leave me alone! I warned you, you mutant freak. Like, is he seriously going to shoot her? For pushing him? He does. He shoots at her. Luckily, Kitty grabs her in time so she can phase. The bullet passes through. Then they go through the wall into the concert. Hey, watch where you're going. And guess what the band are called? Hello Chicago, we are Bunny Starlight Dreams. <laughs> Kitty faces him through into what appears to be the, the security guard's room. The worst possible place. Awesome. But again, look at the reaction. Are they seriously going to shoot? Shoot to kill here. It looks like they are. Don't shoot. Kitty grabs one of the guards, uses him as a shield, and then faces through the wall again. She gets her into a car, and then she's giving her an ID here. Like, what's going on? You, listen to this. Collateral, if I try to kidnap you, you can jump out and take my ID with you. Really? So Kitty gives the girl a ride home, and she introduces herself as Trista, Trista Marshall. So this is Bronze, one of the new characters by Eve Ewing. It's Kitty, Kitty Pride. Okay, let me skip ahead a few pages. You don't really miss much. Kitty goes back home. Um, you see her like 
getting ready for work next morning, she gets a present from the girl, from Trista, and then she's back at work with Lulu. Cute earrings. A ray of sunshine from Miss Gloom. Don't tell anybody, says Kitty. Wouldn't want to ruin my reputation. And then we get this. The end, the bottom panel. But on the next page, no, it isn't. LOL, comma, joke. We get another scene. Finally, we get to see the wonderful, the beautiful Emma Frost. She's talking to herself. Banshee, boring. Aurora, a bit messy for my taste. Bishop, intriguing. Move that to the maybe category. Logan, ugh, distasteful. Wagner, somewhat passe. Well, well, well. Kitty suddenly gets a headache at work. We got Emma saying, Oh, little Catherine Pride, whatever are you up to? You can run away from the X-Men, Kitty, but you can't run away from me. And it appears to be the end. There's a little X there at the bottom, the bottom right panel. But it isn't. We get one more page. It's somebody checking out an app here called Verity or Verate. One app, all you. It's a new app that uses your DNA, your one-of-a-kind signature in the universe, to design custom lifestyle solutions fit for you and you alone. Subscribe now for free and we'll send you our trademarked at-home gene kit. One finger prick, one journey to the best you. This does not sound dodgy at all, does it? And then, the final panel. Robert Drake for standby to Chicago. Drake? Bobby Drake, there he is, and he's been checking the app out. And this is where the issue ends. So, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that, if that's the right word. Um, you can kill me in the comments if you like, but I'd love to know what you think of this issue. Like, who is this for? Who is a target audience, you know? No idea. It seems to be a very, um, like, a female-centric comic, with nothing wrong with that, but is there, you know, a big enough um, target audience of, like, young women buying X-Men comics to support this? You know, a new, a new series? It's not a miniseries, as far as I know. I don't know, just... For me, you know, it, it means nothing. It hits hits nowhere with me. Apart from the art, which I liked, a couple of scenes are okay. You know, maybe it was nice to have a little bit of a slice of life, but not the whole issue about that. Yeah, I don't know. It's just not the most exciting start. You know what I mean? But yeah, hey, it's just one crazy guy's take. That's it. I'm going to give this a score. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10. I think that's been a little bit generous. Okay, so as always, thanks so much for watching. This has been Grey from Wakazashi's Tea House. Signing off, I'm going to try and find a decent X Men comic to read instead. Matane.